Rosa here and today I'm going to be doing a different kind of video which is inspired by one of Lisa Comfort's videos from the Sew For It channel, I'll link it down below and she's been showing collections or lots of dresses that she's made with the same pattern. I think that that is really, in as a sewer myself, a keen sewer, I find it so interesting to see all the different ways which somebody who's really talented like Lisa can adapt a pattern to give a whole range of different looks and that's actually a really frugal way of sewing as well because you don't have to buy a new pattern for every dress you're going to make, you can use it as a block and you can adapt it to make loads of different looks and dresses. I'm going to do a similar video based on one of my favourite patterns, Le Set for Simplicity 1419. I'm going to think of this as seasons, so I've got some summery versions, some springy versions and some wintry versions and I've also got um, a more formal, sort of dressy version. So let's start with the springy versions because that's basically the most basic. Basically the most basic? Sorry, I need to improve my vocabulary. So this one I've shown you before, this is the plain red version. I have lined it, which I properly finished around the zip because this is a new one so I know how to do that now with a gathered skirt just like it states in the pattern. It's great for spring because I made it in a heavier weight fabric. I also made a version in denim which is a stonewash denim and an adaptation I made on this version was drafting my own simple pocket. This is a really easy way to add a, a, a detail to a, a basic dress. I also scooped out the sleeves slightly on this version which just means that I kind of just took about a centimetre, maybe two centimetres off the width of the shoulder. I kept it the same here, but I just cut it up here and then scooped that out to make it a bit narrow on the shoulder. These ones are ideal both for spring because although they're sleeveless, you can layer them with tees and they look great with tights because they're a heavier fabric, they don't cling to your legs like a summery cotton wood, which is really annoying. Um, and they're like a little bit warmer because they're a bit thicker. So those are my summer springy, springy versions. I literally can't talk today, sorry. Um, now let's have a look at some summery versions. Um, these I've had, they might be a bit wrinkled these because they've been in storage. I gave them a quick iron this morning, but you know, I ain't got these dresses out at the moment. This is a version I made, which was inspired by a dress I saw on Pinterest, like most of my sewing, so a bit of hair there. Um, I'll move back to show you the skirt. I literally just copied the dress exactly from Pinterest. As you can see, I've changed it to pleats as opposed to gathers. Really easy adjustment as well to make, to sort of make something a bit more to your style. Pleats also make, give it a slightly more streamlined look as opposed to the gathers. And I drafted my own neck band and my own little skirt panel, which is on the back as well, that skirt panel. The neck band is only on the front. And another summary version which I made is this one. Now this one hasn't been, the lining hasn't been finished properly, so please excuse that, because this is before I knew how to do it. But the rest of the dress is fine. This one, I will put a link to the blog post down below of how I achieved this with this dress. I gave it a panelled look, so I did side panels on the top and on the skirt. Now, this, I actually really like this dress. The, pa the fabric is crazy, it's just so full on and bright. I wouldn't necessarily wanna wear this fabric on like a whole dress. So I compromised and I made it in a panel dress and I um, paired it with bright white because of course the background of this print is white so that's why I chose that. To do the top, I literally just cut, you can see on the blog post in more detail, I just cut the sides of the um, bodice and then I added on seam allowance and I cut the these parts front and back in white and then the main pieces were in the, the pretty fabric. And you can see how it creates this sort of triangular arrow look on the side of the dress. It's kind of cool, quite flattering. This is another summary version which I made and this is a the first version I ever made. It's not really to my taste now perhaps, but it is really cute. It's super, super girly. It's got this um, pansy pattern, repeat pattern on it. And I was very proud of how I managed to cut this extremely symmetrically at the time with this little cutesy Peter Pan collar, which I made in a contrast white fabric. And this is again, perfect for the warm weather because, oh, I also included this detail, which is on the pattern. And I actually leave out most of the times and as you'll see, it's not that I don't like it. I just don't think it's the point is I'm not, not a huge fan. 
Um, this is ideal for summer because it's just made of quilting cotton, so it's very, very lightweight. It's not lined, this one. I did this exactly as it said, which is with a facing as opposed to a lining. And the sleeves are finished with, I think, by, yeah, bias binding. The wintry versions now, I will show you this one first because I did the exact same adaptation on it as I did with that white one I just showed you. So it has, and actually I did wear this in the summer as well as the winter because I think it's really nice. Um, it's again in a pretty crazy print from John Lewis. These are all the John Lewis fabrics I buy are on the sale, I have to be honest, I don't spend a huge amount. But the same, exactly the same adaptation, you can see I cut the side panels. The skirt, I literally just cut a triangle, oh there's a thread, I cut a triangle and then stitched it on the top. It was very basic and obviously I hemmed it before top stitching it on. But you can see that there, it's just top stitched on fairly straightly. So yeah, that's um, the black and obviously this is great for the winter. Um, I used a heavyweight black fabric here so I can wear it with tights. And I, this is one of my favourite dresses I've actually ever made. I don't know why, I just love it. Another version for winter is this one. This is actually another basic work version. And it's made out of a stretch cotton, which is lovely because, again, you can wear it with tights. This one I put little inseam pockets in, which is a pattern piece which is included, which is quite nice. But, of course, if you don't have that included in your dress pattern, you can easily just take any side seam pocket from, I would, I would argue, as long as it's a basic side seam pocket which you like, and you can whack it in the side of pretty much any full skirt. This one, again, I pleated to give it a more streamlined look. Um, and then, yeah, that's it. I, other than that, I didn't make many changes. I left the keyhole. Is that what you call it? Keyhole? I'm not sure. Left the little hole thing out because I wasn't that keen. I think when you're trying to make a dress for lots of different occasions and adapt the same pattern, fabric choice is really important because a different fabric can make something look either formal or casual, like a denim, um, and also make it more appropriate for different seasons, like a heavier weight for the colder weather. This fabric I got from a shop called My Fab no Fabric Time, which is in Kingston, but they have a website. Great fabric, really washes really nicely and wears really nicely. This is another version, and the adaptation I made to this one was I made the collar pointy, which is very easy to do. Um, you just need to yeah, draw it on top, so I traced off the actual collar, and then, sorry, there's a bow there from the coat hanger, um, and I just point, made, made it taper to a point as opposed to a curve, um, but the actual rest of the collar is still curved, but I think that gives it a really nice look. I actually prefer that, I think, having the pointy collar. Other than that, it's made the same. This one I've fully lined. There you go, with a polyester lining. Not sure if I would do that now, if I'd have used it, because I made this about 18 months ago. Maybe two years ago now, I'm not sure. But the reason I lined it is because I must. I found this fabric in my stash. Oh, it does still have the pockets, so that's nice. Um, but it's just the cheapest, nastiest, thinnest fabric. Like, I swear, I can actually see through this. I can see the camera. Um, so <laughs> I don't know why, how I ended up with that in my stash. Um, but I did, and I didn't want to waste it, so I lined it, and it's actually a really nice dress to wear in the summer. So that's really more of a summer version. It's great, I suppose, this cheap poly polyester, because it doesn't crease. So everything has got a silver lining. The last wintry version I'm going to show you is one which I've already shown in a different blog post. And this one is, do you remember? The nice feather one. This is also a basic one, so this one hasn't had any adaptation apart from I also scooped out the armholes on this version and I've done a contrast facing, so if it pokes out it looks quite sweet having a little bit of contrast. Again, I wish I'd finished this be better, but I've learned how to do that now, so it um, doesn't matter too much because again, from the outside you can't see it. it looks I think for the winter it would be really nice layered over a little black polar neck. So there's a wintry version, sort of a heavier weight quilting cotton this one so that works quite nicely and the last I'm going to show you is my most recent version of this dress which is my formal version I don't often make formal things but I am really pleased this is probably the, the most well constructed version which it should be because it's the most recently <laughs> constructed version you know you live and you learn and it's fully lined you can see I finished it correctly <laughs> with the lining around the invisible zipper so there's no messiness there all really neatly done and if this is embroidered fabric let me step back a little bit um, also all of the red pattern you can see is embroidered and I just think it's so pretty 
I absolutely love this. Ow, I just hit myself. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I really <laughs> like this embroidered fabric. I didn't think I'd be able to afford embroidered fabric and then I went to the knitting and stitching show and if you go to my blog I did a um, sort of post about all the things that I bought and this is one of the fabrics which I bought and I really enjoyed placing this and that's matched up really quite nicely um, and it has a little cap sleeve and I designed it so that the cap sleeve would have this sort of curved shape going in any direction and I really love this. I think it is quite formal. I imagine it's something one would wear to afternoon tea, but it's not something I tend to do. So, <laughs> so yeah, that is my collection of Simplicity Simplic 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 1419. I do hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you got a couple of ideas for how you can adapt a basic pattern to make a whole wardrobe, <laughs> basically, <laughs> of dresses for all seasons and occasions. Thank you so much for watching. Do give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, and click subscribe. Hope to see you again soon. Bye!